Hey y'all, welcome to the channel. Today we're checking out the Battle of Bamber Bridge. We've done videos on friendly fire in World War II, Imperial Japan's inter-service hostilities, and Allied forces such as the Americans and Soviets going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. But did you know that two American units fought and shot each other over in Northwest England in June 1943? No, I did not know that. Come on, boys. This is the story of the so-called Battle of Bamber Bridge, a skirmish fueled by beer and no small amount of racism. Okay, now it makes sense. Until US President Harry S. Truman issued Executive Order 9981 in July 1948, the branches of the United States Armed Forces suffered from varying degrees of racial segregation. The first clause of the order read as follows. It is hereby declared that there shall be equality of treatment and opportunity for all persons in the armed services without regard to race, color, religion, or national origin. Finally. Of course, the order didn't erase racism in the military, and it was put into effect some five years after the Battle of Bamba Bridge. Throughout World War II, some two million American servicemen passed through or were stationed in the UK for a variety of purposes, and they weren't always on the job. They often toured the UK and interacted with its denizens. Many American servicemen married English women and brought them back to America when the war was over. <laughs> More often than not, African Americans were well received by the British populace, at least at the start. When more racist white Americans poured into the UK, they imposed their a-holery upon the British, refusing, for example, to eat at a restaurant that served black people. According to Roy Ottilie's article, Dixie Invades Britain, which was published in 1942, American observers who were in the UK in 1942 when the first contingents arrived from America saw amicable and smooth relations develop between the Negro troops and their British hosts. So much so that certain white American soldiers became openly resentful, and they lost no time in attempting to discipline the British people. According to an article by historian Joseph Dickinson, the resentment was due, at least in part, to the frustration of white American soldiers who saw how open British women were to relationships with black Americans and simply couldn't handle it without chucking a massive tantrum. In the <laughs> words of author Graham Smith, many young girls found the blacks fascinating, appreciating their attentiveness and good manners. The United States Army Air Forces, or USAAF, the precursor to the US Air Force, operated out of more than 200 airfields in the UK, each base housing an average of 2,500 men. Among the American units which flew out of the UK was the 8th Army Air Force, and one of the 8th supporting units was the 1,511th Quartermaster Truck Regiment, a racially segregated unit composed of African American soldiers. These men were housed at Air Force Station 569, or more colloquially, Adam Hall in the village of Bembridge in Lancashire, England. Their job was to deliver, via trucks, war material to other air bases in the area. When they were off duty, some of the men enjoyed a pint or two at a watering hole called Ye Old Hob Inn, where they were more than amicable with the local English. When the white Americans started cracking down on this, demanding the establishment of a colour bar in the village, the village's three pubs put up signs reading, Black Troops Only. Racism, it seemed, would not be tolerated in Bamber Bridge. Unfortunately, the 234th US Military Police Company, which operated on the north side of the village, were especially sore about the attentive, well-mannered African-American men winning the hearts of Bamber Bridge's women. The MPs had standing orders to arrest American soldiers who were out without a pass, who weren't dressed properly, or who were acting disorderly. On the 24th of June 1943, just days after the race riot back in Detroit, Michigan, they tried to use their power to give the black soldiers of the 1,511th a hard time. The consequences were disastrous. It's amazing that the white troops who were committing these racist things couldn't see that they were on the same team. I wonder if keeping the troops segregated and the military basically validating racism added to that. It must have. The consequences were disastrous. While the specifics might vary between sources, the core of the story remains the same. 
possibly because an African-American soldier tried to purchase a beer after last orders had been called, MPs Roy A. Windsor and Ralph F. Ridgway entered Ye Old Hob Inn on the night of the 24th and tried to cite one private Eugene Nunn for being without a pass and for wearing the wrong uniform. An argument broke out and the locals, as well as British servicewomen of the Auxiliary Territorial Service, sided with Nunn and the 1511th. An unnamed white British soldier also chimed in saying, why do you want to arrest them? They're not doing anything or bothering anybody. The heat increased and one private, Lynn M. Adams of the 1511th, oh, brandished no. a bottle. In oh, retaliation, no. Windsor drew his gun. It might have gone down then and there had not a black sergeant by the name of William Byrd managed to defuse the situation. Good the job. MPs got into their jeep and were on their way out, but Private Adams was mad and probably a little drunk and decided it would be a good idea to throw his bottle at the jeep. The MPs oh. were outnumbered and chose not to retaliate at that moment. Good. Instead, they gathered some reinforcements and ambushed the men of the 1511th as they were walking back to Adam Hall later that night. Wow. A fight ensued on the road, possibly with the MPs wielding billy clubs. The 1511th fought back with bottles and loose cobblestones. Supposedly to stop Private Adams from hurling a stone at him, MP Carson W. Bosman drew his gun and fired. The bullet struck the private in the neck, but he wasn't killed. The fight soon subsided, and the men of the 1511th made it back to Adam Hall, mostly in one piece. At some point during the chaos, a rumor spread throughout the village. A black soldier had been shot in the back, and the MPs were out on a manhunt. There seems to be a little confusion about what happened next, but the resounding narrative is that a pissed off crowd of some 200 black men rallied at Adam Hall, standing against their white senior officers and calling for war. It's possible they would have stormed the village en masse, but the 1511th's only black officer, Lieutenant Edwin D. Jones, was able to calm them down, for the time being. It wasn't long after that, however, that about a dozen MPs drove into Adam Hall in several jeeps and an improvised armored car fitted with a machine gun. This prompted the 1511th to seize about two thirds of the firearms stored at Adams Hall and either take up defensive positions or drive or run out into the night to meet the MPs head on. The locals were instructed to stay inside and over the next three to four hours, a firefight raged throughout the Bamber Bridge area. Wow. A private of the 1511th, one William Crossland, took a bullet and died, while four or five other soldiers and two MPs were injured. It could have been much, much worse, all things considered. Following this mess, two trials were conducted. In the first, four of the African-American men involved in the fight in which Private Adams was shot were found guilty of various offenses, dishonorably discharged and sentenced to hard labor. In the second trial, 28 of the 35 defenders were convicted of offenses such as ignoring orders, failing to disperse, rioting, mutiny, seizing arms, and firing on officers and MPs. They were sentenced to as many as 15 years, oh my God. but further reviews saw a reduction in these sentences and the release of some of the men. 15 of them returned to duty in June 1944, just in time for the Normandy landings. All in all, the longest period served by any of the men was just 13 months. Again, things could have been Still much worse. Time. The commander of the 8th Army Air Force, General Ira C. Eker, believed much of the blame fell on the MPs, whose blatant racism yes. inspired the entire affair. Thank you. The white officers of the 1511th were also largely to blame, as they did a terrible job of trying to pacify the riding men at Adam Hall and also refused to tend to the wounded among them. At least one of them was reportedly drunk. Following the incident, the 1511th and other trucking units ranks were purged of racist officers and black officers were integrated into the MP units. That's great. Thing That's great. So this in a way helped point out that the segregation was really dumb. Things got slightly better after that. We're interested to know what you think though. Had you heard of the Battle of Bamber Bridge before today? I had never heard of it before today. This is kind of shocking. So this happened in the 1940s, about 20 years or so before the civil rights movement really started 
I wonder how much of an influence this had on the civil rights movement. It must have had some influence because it made the military reconsider segregation. This also reminds me of a story I heard about the Beatles. Whenever they came to America, they were scheduled to play in Jacksonville, Florida, but the venue was segregated, and the Beatles refused to play there because it was segregated. I think that story, along with this story, shows that the civil rights movement in America was heavily influenced by British culture. So I want to just extend appreciation and thank you to the British culture and to those particular British troops for helping our troops realize that segregation is f***ing dumb. Anyway, really great video. Thanks for recommending. If you have any other recommendations, let me know in the comments. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Later.